guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Male. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, Fast Track to Femininity, Why Competing with Men Has Left Women Out of Touch with Their Feminine Side. And guys, this whole article, which is written by a woman, is about how basically she's come to realize that the reason that she can't seem to get many dates in the last few years, and probably why her ex-husband left her, is because, wait for it, she has become so masculine as well as many of her friends that in her view are good looking and have all these good qualities can't get guys either because they're single moms like her and they're obviously so masculine they're so used to being in control and running the show and before couldn't figure out why guys didn't want to date them well now she's starting to realize that guess what guys don't want to be dating or relationships with women that behave like men <coughs> because guess what it's a complete and total turnoff now, here's the interesting thing, guys. This article is not recent. This article is from 2008, 13 years ago. But I chose this on purpose. I chose this to show you that back then, it was starting to, it was being realized that this was becoming a problem. Back then, 13 years ago. But has anybody really listened to that? Nope. And things are far worse today in 2021. I mean, good luck in today's world trying to find a woman that's actually a traditional feminine woman. It's very difficult, okay? Thanks to decades of the you-know-what movement, effinism as I call it, conditioning women to be strong and do anything a man can do and mold them to have all these masculine traits. Good luck trying to find women like that. And it is any wonder that you have all these women that are single and they don't want to be single. They actually do want to have relationships and marriages and families, but they can't get a guy. How many of you guys know women that are like this, that are 30s, 40s, and believe me, they look damn good in their prime in their 20s. And they look good now in their 30s and 40s for their age, but they can't get guys. They certainly aren't... Uh, anywhere close to being on the way to the altar. And as a result, a lot of women nowadays are more and more pursuing artificial insemination to have kids or they're having their eggs frozen with the hope that down the road they meet that guy. Okay, lots of reasons, but they're turning guys off because their personalities become so masculine. And of course, the unrealistic expectations that they deserve a guy that's in the, you know, six feet, six feet tall, six figures, six inches plus down there, six pack, all that, right? But all together, this is what you got in today's world. So even back then, this was being discussed, but it fell on deaf ears. And so and let me just say this real quick, because I know I've mentioned this before in other articles. It all boils down to masculine and feminine energy, okay? And like I said before, men don't want to be out on dates or in relationships with women that act like men. It's a complete turnoff. So when women have these masculine qualities such as being bossy and taking charge and domineering and hard and things like that, it turns guys off. Men are attracted to women that are feminine, soft, kind, passive, nurturing, easygoing. They step back and hang back and let the guy take charge, let the guy be the leader, things like that. There's, there's plenty more qualities and traits, but you get the gist of what I'm talking about here. So any women that are watching this that do like me and like what I talk about, Act feminine, take care of your bodies, dress well, and act feminine, hang back and let the guy be the man in the relationship, and you're going to do fine. But be that way. Don't just pretend to be that way. But anyhow, more and more women are in this situation nowadays, and they complain, complain. And what do they do? What do we all know? They blame guys. They blame guys because they're single. They say guys cannot handle a strong woman. Okay? Let me tell you something. Men can pretty much handle anything you put in front of us, but we're not attracted to a strong masculine woman it turns us off i mean you know the only guys that actually kind of like women like this are guys that are very feminine guys and usually those guys are very domineering bossy take charge mothers okay so that's just what they're used to and i know some guys that are like this and they to no surprise are with wives or girlfriends that are much more into their masculine side but a lot of these women that, like in this article, they actually want a masculine guy, but, you know, they don't want the soft guys, the, the feminine guys. So, but anyhow, guys, I'm going to go into this here, and you're going to see what I'm talking about a little bit more and more, her thing of discovery here. It, it's, it's obvious to us, but a lot of women don't get this. So, it starts off. Recently, the media has been awash with articles suggesting that career women are to relationships what garlic is to a vampire, the kiss of death. We're unable to, to sustain meaning, 
a meaningful unions, apparently because men are intimidated by our intellect, threatened by our higher earning potential, and turned off by our controlling, capable, yet powerful personalities. So right away, this is pretty much going into the article, pointing the finger at guys and insulting us because it's easier to insult guys saying that we can't handle them, right? What I tell you? Right there. Intimidated by our intellect, threatened by our higher earning potential. There are guys out there, don't get me wrong, that are turn, that are threatened or turned off by women that are obviously intelligent and do well financially and stuff. There are guys like that. But most guys I've found, including myself, they like women that actually have a brain. And they like women that actually do well for themselves. The issue is, if you want to do well for yourself, that's great. That's awesome. But when you're with me, don't act like a dude. Okay? I'm the guy. Okay? Understand that. As for the part about turned up by our controlling, capable, yet powerful personalities, well, duh, because that controlling, capable, powerful personality falls into the masculine category. And so, of course, we're turned off by that because we want a girl, not a dude, all right? But thanks to the feminist movement and magazines like Cosmopolitan and things like that telling women to go for all these things and you can do anything a man can do and, and, and things like that, this is what we got. But again, this is 2008. Look how it is now. It's even worse. While this has been my personal experience, I was left by the father of my daughter, now nearly five, three years ago when I was the higher earner. I think the issue goes far deeper. Well, we don't know why he left her. He could have left her because he, he didn't like her personality because she was probably very masculine and take charge. That's probably it. The dynamics could have changed when she became the higher earner. Or maybe he was one of these guys that was just simply just turned off and intimidated because she was making more money. There are guys like that. Who knows? But I'm willing to bet you that obviously her masculine personality has something to do with it because she even admits in here and you're going to see that she's obviously let go of her feminine side. It's more physiological than sociological. The problem, I believe, is not so much with career women per se, but that women are increasingly out of balance with themselves and therefore with men. Translation, out of balance with themselves, meaning they're no longer what nature designed to be, feminine. They are embracing their masculine side. They're taking this alternate personality that society has told them, the feminist movement and all those magazines and people like that and things like that, to basically be more, be more masculine and, and all that because the gender should be equal, blah, blah, blah. And this is what you get. I have an idea. How about people start thinking for themselves, okay? And do what feels naturally, not what you're told to do. There's an idea. I know I am. In the past three years of being single, I've been on a handful of dates. Two years ago, I went to dinner with a doctor who told me that I wasn't in touch with my femininity, as I didn't flirt or wear, wear much makeup. His diagnosis also included the undeniable fact that I was in acute need of affection. See? She wasn't flirting. She wasn't having fun. She probably was trying to... I'm willing to bet you that she probably tried to pick out the place to go. Probably, if he picked her up, probably was like, turn left here, turn right here, and instead of just hanging back and letting him lead and all that, he could tell. Uh, the last straw came four months ago when I had dinner with a successful, high-profile entrepreneur who literally screamed at me that I wasn't so in control, it was scary. See? Translation, masculine. See right here says successful, <clears throat> high-profile entrepreneur. You think a guy like that wants to be with a masculine woman? No. Uh-uh. If this guy is successful, high profile, he's got status, money, you bet your ass he wants a feminine woman. Now, she's probably pretty if he went out with her, but then the second he got with her and she opened up her mouth, that's it. He could see what she was really like, and it turned him off. Although he did backtrack... Although he did backtrack when I dropped my head towards my plate and started sobbing. As well as being hurt, I was shocked and outraged. What I thought had become a, a modern man chivalry. First of all, chivalry has nothing to do... What, what people think of chivalry in today's world has nothing to do with what really was back then. This is between knights, not, not like being a gentleman. And as for what the new perception of what sh chivalry is, chivalry is dead, yes. And you know who killed it? We all know. The Ephesus movement. How many guys have done things where they open doors and done gestures and actually had a woman bark at them because, God forbid, they were actually being gentlemen. It's like, I can open up my own door. I can pull out my own chair. I can pay for my part of the bill. 
And of course, guys acting like gentlemen and getting treated like doormats because they're perceived as being weak. Women killed chivalry. Women killed uh, men being gentlemen. But later, I grudgingly reasoned maybe he had a point. Aha, that's interesting. What had become of my femininity? The difficulty for many of today's career women is that in order to compete with men, we've morphed into them. We've worked ourselves half to death in order to conquer the career ladder, yet in the process, we've, we've trampled our core femininity into the ground. Well, I'm not going to say that, obviously, to do well and be in, in today's corporate world or to be competitive, you got to obviously have some strong personality traits and obviously be tough. But the way I see it is, if you got to do what you got to do in the workplace, that's one thing. But when you go home and you're with your guy or you're out on dates, switch it off. Okay? Stop acting like a man. Be a girl. Otherwise, you're going to have this. Some people may say you can't do that. Well, then... It is what it is. Be lonely. Just don't blame us. These days, as a single parent and sole breadwinner, I often feel more masculine than feminine. Working full-time, making every decision, paying every bill, driving myself everywhere, booking tickets for holidays, lugging in the Christmas tree, it's all completely defeminizing. And again, guys, this is from 2008. We all know how it is today. My friend Sophie, 46, who runs her own design company and is a single mother, another single mom, to two boys aged 9 and 11, she has been single for six years since her husband left her for another woman. And one could wonder why did he leave her. If she owned her own business and was had a lot of these traits, it probably turned him off. He may end up leaving her for another woman, younger, prettier, that actually acted feminine. Now, I don't know the reason why it happened, but I'm just speculating here, but... It happens. Blonde, attractive, and kind, she hasn't been on a date since he walked out. I have absolutely no idea how to be a woman anymore, she says, because I run my business, my home, and make all the decisions about the boys. I feel totally unfeminine. I'm terrified of dating as I have no idea how to behave. It's simple. When you're with the guy, relax. Take it easy. Give him the chance to lead. Let him pick out the place to go for that drink or hang out or whatever. Let him, if he picks you up, let him drive the car and not have you telling him to turn left here and turn right here and this way is easier, trying to be in control. Let go of the control. Be a girl. Relax. Be fun. Be flirting. All that stuff like that, you know? Dress sexy. Wear makeup. Nails. All that. You don't need to look like a clown. You can wear makeup. And just be easygoing. Be nurturing. Be soft. Don't do all this, I gotta be in control of every little thing bullshit. If you gotta do that on your job, okay, that's fine. If you're a single mom with the kids, fine. But with you with a dude, back up. A lot of women I've talked to, they actually want a guy that leads and acts like a man. But the problem is, is a lot of guys in today's world don't act that way because, again, wait for it, the effinist movement has been doing its job through its influence, movie, television, media, politics, the school systems, to mold guys to be more in their feminine side and obviously the women in the masculine side. So is any wonder that you don't have guys that actually act masculine anymore, okay? Traditional, traditional positive masculinity, okay? And a lot of women complain that there are no real men out there. Well, again... Duh. Again, what movement do you think for this? I would love a partner, but I feel unattractive, untrusting, unsexy, and completely alone. That, of course, is the crux for many of us. We honestly believed if we worked hard, we could have it all and more. Yet, so many of us have ended up lonely, exhausted, and brokenhearted with far less than what we bargained for. Right there. We believed if we worked hard, we could have it all. Who told you that? Hmm? Cosmopolitan magazine, all those other magazines that are trying to sell their magazines and sell their products and sell a certain idea. The Ephesus movement by a bunch of really pissed off, angry women that probably weren't exactly into dudes anyway. Telling you all to act a certain way that's going unnatural to how you were designed to be. How about that? When do people start thinking for themselves instead of letting what others, what society, or religion, or what anything else tells you how to think, behave, feel, and live. People, you got to think for yourselves. 
According to a Mintel report, 39% of the adult population is single. That is 19 million people. This makes no sense to me, these numbers, so let's just disregard that. But lots of people are single. And this is expected to rise to 41% by 2011. It's way more now. Clearly, men and women are increasingly out of sync, and the key could be in learning to rebalance ourselves as women and reclaim our essential softness. Yes. So I embarked on a psychological makeover to see if I could fast-track my femininity. First, consultant stylist Kira Jolfi, who runs a company called Wardrobe Women, appraised my closet. Once she got over the shock of how few clothes I have, she immediately sussed that I compartmentalized my wardrobe. I live in jeans and shirts to write in and do the school run, wear nice tops to work, meetings, and have a couple of dresses for going out. But as I rarely go out, there are more ele elegant clothes hardly get worn. She was correct in saying that I'll try to bring out my femininity for the occasion as opposed to being feminine, whatever the occasion. My homework was to mix up my wardrobe, ditch my beloved chunky loafers, and not save smarter clothes for some mythical special occasion. All right, there she's talking about her clothes and her wardrobe, and obviously it's not exactly very at attractive stuff, okay? And yeah, she's got to be that way all the time in terms of being feminine on the outside all the time, but it also isn't just the outside. I mean, look, you can have a lot of women that look damn good. They got pretty, they're pretty, great bodies, they even dress sexy, but the second they speak, that's it. And you know exactly what you're dealing with. I know a woman in particular, she's a pretty girl, thin, in shape. She definitely can dress sexy when she wants to, but she is so masculine and ball busting. It's like, holy shit. You know, you're convinced that she's got something down there once she starts talking and the way she acts. Femininity is about an internal experience with yourself and clothes are about the external appearance that she explained. But your clothes can be a tool to remind you of it and way of tapping into the essence of who you are. This has nothing to do with showing cleavage, for example, as there is nothing less sexy than enforced femininity. Femininity is all about being relaxed with yourself. The problem with the career woman, according to Jolfi, is that the corporate world, women often use dress as an armor. They overdo their hair and makeup, and that is becomes difficult to drop the armor. <clears throat> and that becomes very difficult for a date. But to equate femininity with florals and chiffon is childish and simplistic, she cautioned. To suddenly wear floaty tops in the office smacks it of trying too hard. Wags, for example, are the are thesis of femininity because they reek of desperation. Artifice is the least sexy thing. Now this part they're going to go into more about clothes and bullshit like this. I'm going to skip over this part and get back to the main thing of the article here. And now she goes on to another thing. She says, next, I went to see a renowned cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Jean-Louis Sabat, <clears throat> responsible for some of the most beautiful faces in the world, including Cindy Crawford. Again, this is 2008. He is nicknamed the Botox King. He's just returned from Russia, where he took part in a documentary on the subject of women and femininity. Russian women don't have the hardness of women in England and America, he said. They get their men because they are extremely feminine and they listen to their men, yet they are not regressive. See? What well, he said right there about England and America and obviously plenty of other countries nowadays, thanks to the effinist movement, trying to make women strong and hard. <clears throat> says here, they have managed to hold on to an old-fashioned prettiness. In contrast, most of the women I see in Europe have become warriors. They are feisty and aggressive. Again, where does that come from? And you see that portrayed all the time in movies and television more and more. <clears throat> they see relationships as business transactions, and they treat dating as the same way to climb the corporate ladder, which makes them look and seem hard. So can he help feminize a woman? My job is to make a woman look attractive to a man, but I cannot change her character. See? She can look as feminine on the outside, but the second she opens up her mouth and starts acting like a dude, <clears throat> all bets are off. <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice here, guys. Just bear with me for the rest of the video here. <clears throat> I can soften her looks, but I can't get a woman to be in touch with her soft side. But how do we do ours? How do we do that? I think it's difficult to be a woman today, he says. Our society is quite harsh, and if you want to enjoy the materialism, then you lose your soul. If a woman can stay away from their corporate brains, then they can tune into the softness and core values. 
Interestingly, Dr. Sabala says that the happiest clients are in their 50s and 60s. They are in touch with what matters in their life. They want men for companionship, not for a lifestyle choice. A lot of younger women, they want the guy for the lifestyle choice, the whole picture-perfect situation. And again, we know how picky women are today, especially now in their 20s and 30s. Says they have souls and are far more authentic. Ironically, I believe that the credit crunch will force more women towards that authentic because they no longer will be able to pretend that they are rich or successful. How can you find yourself if you are a fake and pretending to be someone that you are not? Some may consider Dr. Sabah's helping hands towards the appearance of softness fake in itself. However, when he administered Botox to me, the results were fantastic. I wonder how old she is that she has to actually get the Botox. And, I, and I'm glad she's taking care of her looks, but that's a gamble there doing the Botox because she can come out looking like, like some kind of... I'm sure you guys have seen pictures of women that get Botox, or men, and it goes completely wrong and they look like, you know, like... Like something Dr. Frankenstein created. Uh, far from looking taut or frozen, I look like me, only less worn and haggard. I look fresher, and because I look softer, I feel softer. However, as both Kira Jolfi and Dr. Sabah concur, the appearance of femininity is meaningless without the inner experience of it. Yes, therefore, stop acting like a dude. Psychologist Jeff Allen, founder of Physiology of Vision, who coaches for relationship and business success, said, Independent women look like they are tough and have their acts together, which is appealing, but they really are well def defended because they don't want to get hurt or be vulnerable. But to be feminine, at some level, you have to be open. Yes, open to letting the guy take the lead, letting the guy take control, and you don't have to be in control all the time. It's a turnoff. And stop being so domineering. Stop being so ball-busting. Just basically shut the hell up and just relax, laugh, and have a good time. Being open allows connection, intuition, and compassion. These are all feminine gifts. Exactly. So how do we open ourselves up to our feminine energy, especially if you want to survive career-wise in a male-dominated world? The feminine principle is all about allowing things to unfold and happen, not always interfering. Translation, you don't have to always be in control. Career women think they have to be in control to make it happen, what I just say. But if they stop and tap into some kind of emotional in intelligence and empathy, it makes them, them better problem solvers. According to Allen, you cannot have true success or a successful relationship without the balance of masculine and feminine. The reason career women feel lonely within themselves and often have a deep sense of failure is because they are not connected to their hearts. Yeah, definitely. I'm not saying career women should check, chuck it all away, but if they connect to things that really matter to them, if they start to appreciate little beautiful things every day, literally stop and smell the roses, then what they will have to offer will be, really be quite profound. Alan also says we must stop competing with men, especially in relationship, as competition is totally destructive. Well, that is another masculine trait and masculine quality, okay? Men... Masculine, a lot of masculine traits, guys, but another one is being very competitive and trying to accomplish new things. This is why I encourage you guys all the time to better yourselves, always trying to improve yourself in some way, have a new challenge. These are masculine traits. And guess what? Guys that have these masculine traits are attractive to feminine women, if you can find one. <clears throat> Researching this article, I feel I have undergone a subtle yet seismic change. I can see that being feminine is about allowing oneself to yield more and control less. Ding, ding, ding. Two nights ago, I went to dinner with a male friend. A friend. And for the first time in years, I looked more feminine, acted more femininely. And crucially, felt more feminine. Not in a simpering way, but with a profound realization that being able to show vulnerability isn't a female weakness, but a sign of a woman's strength. Well... Whatever there. But the point of this whole thing, guys, because the article's over, is that this goes back to 2008. So some people waking up to realize, like this woman who wrote the article here, that this isn't working, okay? I'm alone. I'm unhappy, okay? And I'm turning guys off, okay? Obviously, at first in the article, she insulted guys, saying that they can't basically handle strong woman and then she realized after being on some dates and some guys actually being very blunt and pointing it out to her then she took a good heart cold hard look at herself which is rare so i respect that 
How this woman turned out, I have no idea. Hopefully she uh, took that big stick out of her butt and stopped acting like a dude. But the point of this whole thing is, guys, it's way worse now. And unfortunately, thanks to the effortless movement, it's going to continue being that way. But we talk about these things and bring it up. And for the very small percentage of women that do watch my channel, there you go. You want to you want to get guys? You, you, you don't have guys in your life, whatever? Stop acting so masculine. It's a complete turnoff. However, I have found through the comments that I get, the emails that I get, the messages I get from Instagram and all that, most of the women that follow me are actually more conservative and are more traditional in the sense, traditional women and more feminine. But that's how it is. So I'm not surprised there because the women that are more in touch with their masculine side or these woke effinist types, they hate my guts with a passion. They don't watch me regularly unless they want to give me a thumbs down or insult me in the comments section. But anyhow, 2008, guys, just goes to show you. So, but it's just so funny again how the finger pointing goes. And I've mentioned this before in other videos, blaming us because we can't handle a strong woman. It's bullshit. We can handle anything you put in front of us. It's just no guy is attracted to that. Okay. So, you know, but for you guys to do dating and relationships with all that, you know, stick to your masculine traits. And good, and good luck trying to find the feminine girls. They are out there, but they're rare. So, But anyhow, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.